All right, guys, thanks for coming along. Uh, we're going to talk about docs today. So who am I? Um, I'm Stephen Boudinger, support manager at Chocolatey Software. Uh, you can follow me on social media, at Stevie Coaster, everywhere. Uh, Twitter, GitHub, LinkedIn, wherever. That's, that's what I use everywhere. Um, and what are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about your function code versus your people code, aka your documentation. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just drill into what that means, some tooling that you can use to make that a little easier on yourselves, and then we'll have some questions at, at the end of it. Um, quick show of hands, how many people publish documentation now for PowerShell stuff that they write today? That's not too bad. How many of you hate doing it? <laughs> All right, excellent, excellent. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll have everything you need to know to not have to do that anymore. Um, just let your build pipelines take care of it for you. That, that is the goal. So let's see if I can escape this stupid thing. All right. Is it going to behave? Get rid of this. Perfect. All right. Excellent. So I've put together a really quick module um, just called Summit Docs. And I've got a couple of build scripts here. And I've got a public folder. Inside of this public folder is where all the good stuff lives. This is where all the, the functions live. And I know Steve Judd is in the room. So I included get dad joke. Yeah. And actually, if you drill into this particular function, uh, I blame Mad Judd Missile for this one. Yeah. Um, so docs are one of the most important parts of UX in my opinion. If you don't have good docs to teach people how to use the tools you write or show them how to use the tools you write, they're going to go find something else to use or not use that at all and keep doing things the more painful way. So having really good help inside of your functions just enables a better user experience for them on the other end. Because PowerShell has a great discoverability aspect to it. It has a great help system underneath of it. You can get inline examples in your shell for how to do the stuff. But that also gets in your way a little bit. But that's where PowerShell also has your back with that dash online parameter for Git help. So when you say Git help, command name, or topic, dash online, if you've done your common based help right and a little bit of plumbing in your function code, that's going to pop a web browser open to that documentation. They can set that on a separate screen. They've still got their shell. They can continue to work. They can see the examples. And it's just a really nice flow for people trying to learn your tool or use your tool more effectively if they've got those examples, they've got the parameters, they know what types those parameters accept, et cetera, et cetera. It's just a really great UX. But it all starts right here. And I will argue that when you're writing your code, you can write your function and it's amazing and it works great, but if I don't see this block at the top, right here, you're not done. Your code's not done until this is in there and you've got pester tests written that verify that this is correct, that it works, that it exists, and those are all green when your build pipeline runs. Now, I've only got 45 minutes. I don't have any pester tests to prove this stuff out, but the point is, it's testable. You can test that your help is there. So if we look at a couple other examples, if you're not familiar with writing comment-based help, it's just a giant comment block at the top of your function. I like to put it inside of the function itself. So when you open your function declaration, put the comment-based help right down inside of here. That way if you're like folding things together or you have multiple functions in the same file, things don't get lost in the mix. It's just, it's right there. You know it's self-contained in this little bucket and it's easy to update it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you'll notice that I've got the comment-based help, but it's not wired up to use that online thing yet. This, this won't do that. 
but we're going to make it do that real quick. And I wanted to leave it out so that I could highlight two things. The comment-based help system has the concept of dot link. So you can provide URLs here. You can have more than one link, but the first one in the comment-based help will be what Dash Online uses to go out and open that documentation. So if I were to come in here and say, hey, the help for this function is at stevicoaster.dev slash summit docs slash git package icon, for example, this would be what Dash Online uses to open help. And I could have further information over here. Maybe I want to link out to like docs.chocolatey.org slash create package or whatever the slug is. I'm pulling that out of my out of my head. I don't actually know if that's real or not. But you could have more than one link that people can, if they're reading your code, they can see that stuff. And if you generate your online documentation, that'll be a hyperlink that you can click into um, and go other places. I don't like this approach for that reason. You can have more than one and you can mess the order up. So you could accidentally flip-flop where your online parameter takes people so they can't see the actual help for your function. But there's another better way. So we're gonna take this section out and we're gonna come down here into the commandlet binding. And if you're not using commandlet binding and all that stuff for your scripts, like you absolutely, absolutely should be. This is the secret sauce that gives you a lot of stuff for free like dash verbose, dash debug, and all that good stuff. But you can also decorate this. So you can say help URI is equal to, and then give it a URL, et cetera, et cetera. And then that will be what Dash Online uses to generate your docs. And I'm not 100% sure what the links for this stuff is going to be just yet because we're going to fix this and make it all work as we go through this talk, but I want to leave it leave it the way it is for right now. And I want to talk about some other tooling. So we've, we've reviewed comment-based help inside of the functions. I think we all understand how, how to do that. I think we all write that. Let's use some other tools to extend that stuff. Um, yeah? Mm-hmm. Um, if it has both, I think it does. I think it does. Yeah, so the question was, uh, if you use help URI in your commandlet binding and you have a dot link in your comment based help, will the help URI override the dot link? And I believe it does. So we've, we've reviewed this and now we need to take this and put it into a format that we can easily use online. Thankfully, there's a really helpful PowerShell module for that called Platyps, or Platypus as I like to call it. So if we were to execute my build script that I have here, uh, I'm gonna say build local and say dash build. And what that's gonna give me is this output folder and I've got my PSM1 and my PSD1 now. So I've looped over that public folder and just pulled all of those functions into this PSM1 file and then my PSD1 I've copied from the root and it's got all the stuff in it. There's better ways to do that, but quick and dirty, that's, that's the way I did it. Now that I have this module generated, I can import it. So I can say uh, import, just to show you that it works, import module, uh, I'll put some docs, PSD1, support it, and then we can say git command module, some docs, and there they are. So, good to go, and if you want to run one, you can get enter. Yeah, it's broken. Oh, yeah, I don't, I'm on a Mac, so the speechy stuff doesn't work, but there you go. Um, so we have our module loaded, that's all good. 
so I've got in my build script, again, build local, I have generate the help. And what this does is it, it invokes platyp platypus on, on the back end. So you can say new markdown, and let me clear this out a little bit. So new markdown help module summit docs, and then you can say out, output folder, and let's just say example, that way it goes somewhere else. And it loops through all the functions in that module and then generates the help form. And if you look at the markdown, it's got a very defined schema to it, and if you go modifying stuff, it will fall over for you a little bit. So keep your comment based help consistent with dot synopsis, the thing underneath it, dot parameter, the thing underneath it, et cetera, et cetera. Once this is generated, you can play around with it if you want to. You can add stuff to this. It's just marked down at this point. So once you've generated this and need to do more, you could. Um, but for generating it, kind of keep to how comment based help is formatted and then do do the conversion and let that happen and don't don't stray too far um, outside of the lines there because the schema will shoot you in the foot if you if you're not careful but once this is just you know um, and I think yeah good this one does this one does so see how it has fill in the description If we look at get dad joke.ps1, I don't have a description. The schema dictates that there be a description. So it puts placeholder stuff in. So. You can run the yeah. The yeah, exactly. So you could pester test your markdown as well to verify that all the stuff is in there. Or you could fail out earlier when you're testing your comment based help and say, hey, you forgot a description, dummy. You're going to need this. So yeah, but once you have your your markdown, so we use Platypus for that, and you can get more granular with uh, Platypus if you want to. So you can say new markdown help, uh, help. You can say an individual command as well from a module or just anything else, and it'll just run that one thing. Um, I have a a PowerShell module for uh, Sonatype Nexus that wraps the API. So you have a CLI that you can interact with uh, the Sonatype Nexus instance. And it's huge. There's tons and tons and tons uh, of APIs. So there's a lot of commands. And to make the documentation make sense, I broke it up into individual folders. So there's a folder for security, there's a folder for repos, blob stores, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when I run my build pipeline, I actually split that stuff out and say, hey, all these commands, they're prefixed this way when you're working with a component, or they're prefixed with repository for working with repositories. So I can filter that stuff out and then say, for each of these, new markdown help dash command and say the output path is dot docs slash repository or slash blob store and that generates the folder structure in my docs for me automatically as well so I don't have to worry about it and I can I can show you an example of that in a little bit hmm? uh, this is latest so 0 14 0 I believe is the latest version uh, I've not tried the beta yet yeah I know they're they're working on a lot with platypus. So if I were to want to fix this, I wouldn't fix it here. I would fix it in here. Yeah, so I would come down here and say, Nope, it doesn't. It keeps it there. 
Yeah. So, and if you want to regenerate all your all your health after you fixed everything, there's a dash force parameter. So it'll just overwrite everything that got created in that first run. Is the autocomplete for JavaScript part of the partial plugin? Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's actually really cool. So if you didn't know this little shortcut uh, inside of VS Code, if you take your comment based help out and want to put it in real quick, you can pound pound and it'll fill it all out for you. So if you've got like a bunch of parameters, it'll put a dot parameter for each one of your parameters across all your parameter sets. And then you can just tab complete through. So you can do this and you can tab and you can do this and you can do this, blah, 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 blah. And just really quickly fire down through um, and do all the work. Pound, pound, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the the main or the. <laughs> yeah, so super handy, especially if you like, what was that thing to do the thing in the comment based help? Well, just hit pound, pound, and it'll scaffold it out for you. It won't do everything, it won't give you like dot links and all that good stuff. Um, but it will give you a synopsis description, one example, and then all of your all of your parameters. So it, it does speed you up quite a bit um, when you're when you're doing this stuff. Now that we have our markdown files created, we could push those up somewhere. We could push those to GitHub in the docs folder and just point people to the markdown links in GitHub. That's totally fine, right? It works okay, but we could do better. I'm gonna get rid of this example folder so it's out of my way. I'm gonna minimize this down and this down and not save this and close this. Enter a tool called make docs. So Make Docs is an open source project, and if we go over to makedocs.org, their getting started guide is really great. It walks you right through everything that you can do. Um, it is a Python tool, so you do need Python installed to use it. Um, but if you're running a Mac, you can brew install Make Docs. If you're running Windows, you can Chaco install Make Docs, and it'll make sure you get Python and all that good stuff on there for you um, and be really up to speed quickly. And then Make Docs new, my project, will scaffold out uh, a YAML file and a docs folder and an index for you. I didn't do this, I just, I knew it needed that stuff, so I did it myself. But if you're just starting out, follow the quick start guide. It'll, it'll walk you right through everything. And the nice thing about Make Docs as well, once you've built your site, the make doc serve commandlet will, or the make, not, make doc serve command rather, will host a local web server for you with your docs in it. So you can just go to localhost 8000 and see what the docs look like. Um, as you can see, out of the box, it's kind of ugly. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can theme it. And that's the cool part. So we're going to use this read the docs theme today and we'll, we'll see what that looks like. So if we go back to Visual Studio Code and we run our build script again, I can say generate docs and it will generate that site for me. Now, just to show you uh, what that looks like, I'm going to run make docs serve directly and hopefully go to this. So this is what our documentation looks like um, locally. So you can see get dad joke, it gives you a nice, nice menu. You can jump down through things. You can see the different parameters, et cetera, et cetera. If you have something a little bit more advanced, uh, the examples, you can see all the different examples, you can thumb out the parameters and go to each of the individual parameters. But the, the syntax highlighting and things like that are really pretty and it makes it easy to read and follow it. 
Uh, I can blow that up. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what that. That's what that looks like. You could. You could do. You would have to do some work behind the scenes a little bit to make that work. So when I build my module, I'll like loop through my public and my private folders and I'll stuff everything in a PSM one and then I rely on my PSD one to expose the public stuff for me. So in that process, you could short circuit where you do your docs creation and at the same time of creating that PSM one file, you could also, at the same time, since you're dot sourcing that function in, you could say, hey, this is a private function and do this with it, and this is a public function and do this with it. So you could folderize like private and public inside of here. Um, it's just code, so you can be as flexible as you need to be or, or as simple as you need to be as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, what are the prerequisites for hosting this? Um, well, if you go over here and you say build local, yeah, so you can say publish docs. It's hosted in GitHub pages. Yeah, GitHub pages, yeah. So once this pushes, please conference Wi-Fi. Um, it worked in my hotel room this morning, and I cleaned it all up. Maybe I shouldn't have cleaned it all up. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, the question was, if you were using something like Netlify or Hugo or something like that, could you push to one of those GitHub room, GitHub repos? And yes. Yeah, the, the GitHub deploy stuff is built in to make docs. So behind the scenes, this is doing make docs gh dash deploy. Yeah, so it's reading my git info and it creates a gh pages branch in GitHub for me. And it what if you don't have GitHub pages configured that first time, it plums it for you. So it enables it, says, hey, track the gh pages branch and you're done. Um, and I don't, do anything with that GitHub pages branch. I just let this happen. I never touch it. My build pipeline shoves the, the static content into that uh, when I need it and, and it just works. And it's, this is gonna be silly. So let me go over here um, and run. I am a toddler when it comes to my terminal. I apologize. I, I, it's hilarious to me. Yeah, so that worked. I don't know why it doesn't work in the integrated terminal. It did that in my hotel room this morning, and I forgot that it did that. Um, so this will be published to stevecoaster.dev uh, in a second because I am using a custom vanity domain for GitHub pages. Um, if you're not, it's going to be whatever your username is dot GitHub pages dot io, I think, and then slash the repository name. Um, but if we were to come out here now and look, it doesn't take very long for things to happen. Uh, so, stevecoaster.dev slash summit docs. Let's look. Yeah, so it's already live. Mm -hmm. 
You could. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that the the build step uh, that where I said generate docs, um, it created this site folder, and that's where all the static content lives. So if you have like an nginx instance or an Apache instance or an IIS server running internally, you could grab this site folder and dump it into there and serve it up, and you're done. You, you don't have to use GitHub pages, but since it's built into the tool by using GH deploy and GitHub pages at three, you don't have to worry about keeping the lights on a VM somewhere or having like some spend in Azure for a Azure site or anything like that. You can just host it in your GitHub and it doesn't cost you anything and you don't have to do anything. It just happens. Um, there is one caveat to the, the make docs approach. Uh, when it comes to doing a build, uh, like hooking it up to CI. GH deploy locally here knows about my git config. So I get push and all that good stuff. I don't, I'm not prompted for credentials. It just happens. Well, when you go into CI, it doesn't know anything about it. So you kind of have to cheat a little bit and tell it about it. So if we look at the actual build script uh, for CI, um, it's commented out right now um, so that I could show, show a failure. Um, but if you munge your remote and just override origin, and I've got two secrets that I've got stored in my, in my pipeline, my username and a personal access token. And if you build your URL with the username and the personal access token inside of it, like this, it won't prompt for credentials or anything like that inside of CI. And GH Deploy will just push to this remote without any, any kind of problems. And it's relatively safe to do it uh, as well because that won't mess up uh, your pipeline um, once it's done. It's, it's done and then the next time it builds, it's fresh again, your, your origin's back to normal at that point until you get to your publish doc step and you manage your origin again and then it works. Um, so if we look at uh, the actual build pipeline, I've got it pulled up here and I did it graphically so we could all see it, but you could absolutely do this in YAML if you wanted to. But this is what my build pipeline looks like. I make sure that I have the stuff on the runner that I need. So I install Platypus. Um, and I actually use Chaco for this because the module is available in Chocolatey. And the gallery was taking forever um, to install it. It was like five minutes before it was done. So I switched to using Chaco um, for that part. And then I also use Chocolatey to install make docs as well, so all that stuff is on the runner. And then I run my build script, and that's very, very simple. Uh, build.ps1 with the build parameter creates that output folder, creates that summit docs folder, creates, creates the module, generate my markdown help, same deal. I've got a build script and a generate help switch, and that does the work of invoking PS, um, that new markdown help to generate the markdown help. And then for the docs part, same kind of deal, build.ps1 slash generate docs. That will generate the static site. And then for this publish docs step, you publish the docs and magic happens. And then all of a sudden you're done. So if you're gonna do it with CI like this, the only thing you have to worry about is making sure that your common base help is correct and your docs are done and your end users are very, very happy. Because at the end of the day, they can do Dash online. Oh, so you mean this stuff? Yep. Yeah, so if you look in VS Code in this docs folder, I, I have two things hiding in this docs folder. Um, I have a C name record which is required if you're going to use a vanity URL, um, then it just points to stevicoaster.dev. 
and then I have an index.mv that I've generated. And if you do make docs new project and give it a project name, or make docs new and give it a project name, it generates this docs folder and a scaffolded out index.md for you. So you can just write whatever markdown you want uh, inside of there, and that'll get turned into your home page. And that's, that's what you see here. So I've got a couple of different heading styles, um, and you can use code fences and things like that to do all the, the standard markdown stuff that you're used to doing is supported inside of here. And you can have like navigation across the top for different things as well, depending on your theme. So you can do like an about.md or a help.md or whatever.md. Uh, and then inside of your make docs YAML file, which is the configuration file for the static site, uh, you can give it a name, the theme, the URL, the docs directory, and then you can also give it, uh, since it is just YAML, you can give it navigation, and I think it's nav like that, and then you tab, so about, dot md, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, it's in the quick start guide, how you can do the, how you can do the navigation and all that good stuff. Um, there are different themes available for make docs. So one good example, I've, I gave this talk to a user group um, a while ago, actually, um, and the guy took it and ran with it, and like the next day, he had this built. So he did a talk uh, on Posh Acme, and he did this, and he was like, yeah, I used your talk to, to generate this. Um, he doesn't have the previous versions, because he just started it at version four, uh, but this is the material theme. I believe, for make docs, which supports versioning. So if you've got like a version three of a module, version two of a module, and you need that different versions of help available, you can version your docs as well. It's an amazing thing. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, material is, it's way more flexible than read the docs is, but I, for me, I like, this look and feel, um, and there are ways that you could like pull in the seam and customize it if you wanted to, to, to do the versioning, et cetera. Um, but I keep it, I keep it pretty stock. And just to show you um, what that folder stuff looks like, so if we go in here, we've got all these different sections for all the different bits and pieces. So it makes it relatively easy to, to jump around and see everything. So if you want to do like a routing rule, you can go to the routing rule section and, and there they all are, et cetera, et cetera. And my build pipeline takes care of that split so I don't have to worry about it. The only thing I have to make sure of is that my comment based help is correct and that my pester tests for the help are all passing. Which is super great. So let's do this. Uh, we haven't plumbed anything up yet, but I wanted to wait till this was published so that I could go here and get an example URL. So we do this, come here, say help. Oops, Pull button. So we can do that one and save it and do the same thing here. Help and then just change the name of the function.
just for the sake of seeing it all again. Let's nuke some of this stuff. Don't rename it, delete it. I really should have a mouse. I hate trackpads. I don't know about anybody else. I can't stand trackpads. And let's fix this one while we're in here too. So, uh, description. Now that that's fixed, let's run dash build and as soon as the environment for GitHub pages does its thing, that'll refresh. But the important part, now if we were to say import module, I'll put some docs, psd1 force, and we say git help um, get package come online. Ta-da, it goes directly to the doc site. So if you've got multiple monitors, you've got your help right beside you, and it's out of your way. Because otherwise, if you're doing like git help, git package icon full, for example, yeah, you can see all the help in here in your terminal, but you've got to scroll up to read it, et cetera, et cetera. I feel like it gets in your way a little bit. It's helpful that it's there, but it's still in your way a little bit that online parameter is some pretty pretty awesome black magic secret sauce. Um, yeah. We've got about five minutes left and I'm running out of stuff to talk about. Any questions? What's that? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. The, the platypus stuff is pretty dang flexible. It can do compiled, it can do stuff like this. It can do external help. It's it's pretty wild what all it can do. Um, yeah. 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 And a super cool trick I learned with it uh, recently in talking to Sean the, the other day is that there is a commandlet that I didn't know about for exporting this stuff as a YAML, which is super helpful if you need to do other stuff, like convert it to other formats and things like that. If you get it as a YAML, you can process that YAML and do stuff with it. And that's actually how um, the docs pipeline for Microsoft works. They export the YAML and do stuff with it, and then they generate the doc site. It's not like no, it's really not. And he's like, there's this YAML function in there. I'm like, there's a what now? <laughs> so, yeah. Anything else? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, it'll pick it up. Yeah, it doesn't matter which which place you put it. So, uh, the question was where where the parameter help uh, ultimately ends up. So, when you do that pound pound thing, it's going to generate one of these parameter things for every parameter in your function, and then you fill in uh, what the what the description of it is. But you absolutely could come down here and put it down here if you wanted to, and it would pick it up. I just, this feels messier to me. Um, that's why I tend to 
just keep everything in this block so it's all together. It's easier to pester test that too if it's all in this block. Yeah, just please do this. Like, if you're not doing the dash online thing and the, the static documentation and all that stuff, at least give people help so they can use get help in the terminal and have something. There's nothing more infuriating than finding something really cool and want to use it and do get help on it and nothing happens. It's like, ugh, how do I use this? And then you just red text your way to success and that's, that's not fun. <laughs> All right, folks, well, yes, yeah, yeah, there's like 30 seconds left in this thing, so I'm going to call it. I've got nothing left. <laughs>